know the angels in heaven. We rejoice. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.
are standing in our own strength. It's the strength of the Lord. So we will sing your grace and mercy. Good morning. Can I just say that now um, full in the sanctuary. There aren't any more seats in the sanctuary unless you are a member of the Gordon family or an extended member. We have got the other room laid up, so please um, just go straight through and the service is being relayed. Thank you.
darkness against principalities and powers. But we know we are walking with Jesus. He gives us his Holy Spirit that dwells in us. So we are on the battlefield despite of what comes. We are not going through it in our own strength. We are going through it in the strength of the Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.
We've done church. I think we can go home now. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to City Road Baptist Church. I welcome you here in the sanctuary, over there in the overflow, over there online. I welcome you. Today is our family service, but it's a family service with a difference. Today we are going to meet together to celebrate the life and ministry of our husband, father, grandfather, uncle, brother, pastor, and friend. We are going to do him homage today. In this service, we're going to be singing some of his favorite songs and just hearing some of the ways in which he touched the lives of others while he was here with us. There will be two opportunities for you to deliver tributes to our pastor, our late pastor. The first of our tributes is going to be led by our sister Laurel, so I'm just giving you the heads up. And the second will be led by our dear friend, uh, Gloria, Gloria Graham. So that is what it looks like at the moment. Friends, we are live streaming. Therefore, I'm going to ask you to keep the movement in the sanctuary to a limit. If, if you need the bathroom, then I'm going to ask you to go down the sides of the church rather than walk down the middle. Can you do that for me? Thank you. We serve a risen savior and he's in the world today. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives here within my heart. Psalm 121 has been my comfort and my strength in these past days. And I would like to read this very familiar Psalm to you. It says, I will lift my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber nor sleep. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. He watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. The Lord who watches over your life, the Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Brothers and sisters, how can we be afraid? How can we be afraid of the future with such a promise as this? And this is just one chapter of a Bible full of promises. You can dip into it any time of the day and draw strength and comfort for your souls. I was hoping that Pastor Carver would be here by now to lead the prayer but he's not. So let's pray. Almighty and most righteous Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for today. We give you thanks and praise, Heavenly Father, that today your name will be lifted up above all names. And that every at every at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Father God, we thank you for giving us breath. We thank you, dear God, that when we opened our wardrobes this morning, there was clothes for us to put on. When we opened our cupboards, there was food for us to eat. Oh, dear God, and however we journeyed here this morning, there was transportation to get us here. There are so many little things that we can give you thanks for. But today, dear God, we come to give you most of all Thanks for the life of our dear pastor and friend, Glenford Gordon. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the way that you used him 
throughout his life and for the many lives that he touched. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us here this morning in this way. We ask your blessing upon this service, but most of all, dear God, we ask that you will be blessed. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, and we look to you for our future. You are where our help comes from. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our praise and worship song is, well, our opening song is one of Pastor's favorites. I'm going to hand over to the group now to lead you in that. Your grace and mercy. Please. The first song is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please sit, sit. Do you know one of one of the things that I used to imagine um, should I pass is looking down and seeing the people that turned out for me. I think Pastor would have been very proud today. I'm going to change things up just a little bit while our, our people settle. Today is our family service, like I said. And usually we celebrate people who have birthdays in the month of February. Can you hear Pastor asking for his cake? So, so every, every, every year he would say that February was the, the, the best month because there were so many people born in February and then he would end it by asking for his cakes. I'm going to ask, is there anybody this morning who has a birthday in February? Could you please stand? Same day. Same day. <laughs> please stand. I'm going to ask our, our group if you would come out and, and, and celebrate with these February born people. You know, I'm not asking you to stop. <laughs> We're going to sing you happy birthday. We're going to celebrate. I, can I just say, so we don't go into it a second time, are there any an wedding anniversaries in the month of February? No? Just selling birth, celebrating birthdays. Oh, we have a wedding anniversary. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that after the birthdays, all right? Group, can you come and join us? Diane, come. happy birthday. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Apparently, we have birthdays in the overflow as well. Happy birthday over there, too. Okay. Bill, where's Bill? Where is he? Okay. Okay. this month. Thank you. You may sit. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, you may sit. Thank you. We're going to switch things around just a little bit and we're going to sing happy anniversary to those who have an anniversary today. Um, who has a wedding anniversary? Oh! Uh, I'm forgetting my dear mom. Uh, just before Valentine's Day, it would have been her anniversary. And as you know, we lost, we lost dad, oh my goodness, six months ago. And so we will celebrate your anniversary. And the couple just behind, and another one just over here. If it is your anniversary this month, please stand up. didn't quite go as I wanted it to, but you, you, you appreciate the sentiment. Bless the Lord. Welcome, dear brother. 
Uh, we have the pleasure of having, I never know which way around to say it, <laughs> Reverend Dr. Carver with us this morning. And we thank you, dear brother, for accepting our invitation to the pulpit this morning. Is it too soon, brother, to ask you to just pray for us, please? Hallelujah. I was here as a church praying for pastor and you know the Lord says well you know what I'm going to receive him and I know this church is so blessed and my prayer today Minister Maxi my friend my wife and my daughter are here just to bless you today and I'd just like us to stand in prayer. So, Father God, you are our everlasting Father. Lord, we've asked you a few questions, you know, about our pastor, our friend, husband, granddad, dad. But you know you are a God of mystery and you are a sovereign God. So we thank you today that we are going to celebrate who pastor was and we're going to be together in fellowship in fact he's brought us all together lord and we pray today that you'll guide our steps mm. as we worship as we remember as we give tributes as we reminisce as we think about his sermons but lord most of all to give you the glory mm. so wherever we are in pain today bring shalom your peace wherever there is uncertainty bring your clarity wherever there is unease you bring the balance and today Lord like Solomon we're saying we're not going to lean on our own understanding but in all our ways today, we are going to acknowledge you because you are the director of our path. So we thank you for this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> it is our custom uh, at City Road Baptist Church to welcome each other with a welcome song. But because we're full to capacity this morning, I'm going to ask that when we welcome each other this morning, we just turn around and give each other a loving nod. Okay? Uh, another one of Pastor's favorite songs was um, Grace, Your Grace and Mercy Brought Me Through. And what a testimony to us all today. We've all felt the pain of his loss, but we're here this morning. And it's God's grace and his mercy that has brought us this far. Let's stand and sing.
Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone online. Our reading today is taken from Psalms 27. The verses that will be read will be between 1 and 6. This is the Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advanced against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes that will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though work, war, sorry, break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At this sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy, and I will sing and make music to the Lord. Here endeth the word. Sorry, just bear with me. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning in the sanctuary. Good morning in the overflow. And good morning online. Welcome to City Road Baptist Church. Welcome to this special memorial service. It's so good to see so many of you. You know, we, we, we knew there would be a lot of people. But Pastor was so popular, not just locally, but right across the country. And we know, you know, just by the amount of people that are here and are still coming in. So we give God thanks for today that we're here. This is a special memorial service that's dedicated to Pastor Gordon, individuals to make a tribute um, today, um, you know, of their memory and their experience of him. So we welcome you. You know, Pastor Gordon was called home to rest on the 13th of January, suddenly. And I think some of us are still trying to, you know, come to grips knowing that he buried his brother on the Tuesday, he was here on the Wednesday, and he's no longer with us now. So we welcome you. So this is a, tri you know, a tribute service uh, for him. We welcome our sister Maxine Gordon, and you know, we keep saying, you know, we're looking after her. <laughs> We have told her that, you know, we will tell her <laughs> when she needs to step back. So, you know, we continue to pray for her. We continue to pray for Scott, Georgina, Benjamin and Josephine, four children, and the rest of the Gordon family. So we just keep praying for them at this difficult time. And we just pray the Lord, you know, we pray for those they're online as well. I know there are individuals online, members of the family. So we continue to pray, and we just pray that you will experience the Lord's comfort and his blessing as you go through this difficult time. So welcome. Uh, I'm not going to say <laughs> joining us for the first, because I know there are a lot of people who are joining us online and in the sanctuary and in the overflow for the first time. So if it's your first time at City Road Baptist Church, welcome. And if you would like to stand so we can see, we've got first time individuals here worshiping with us. So if it's your first time, please stand and we'll give you a welcome, both in, both in the sanctuary and line and in the overflow. So thank you so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And if you're someone who's returning after being away sick or for other reasons, 
We welcome you back and we just say thank God and pray the Lord will minister to you whatever your needs are. So welcome back to City Road Baptist Church. A special welcome to Reverend Carver Anderson, who's not a stranger to us. You know, he's preached here several times. He's one of City Road Baptist Church family. And we welcome his dear wife, Pauline, and their daughter, who's here this morning. And Reverend Carver is going to be bringing the, the, the word this morning. So welcome to this special um, service. And we just pray the Lord will minister to you as you bring the word. And I just pray the Lord, you know, we'll open our hearts and we receive the word that he has for us on this special occasion. You know, um, so many people have contributed uh, continuously, but especially today to make today such a, a wonderful um, sermon and also to welcome everybody. So we just give God thanks for all those who are sharing their gifts. Welcome um, Reverend Dave Ellis, who's a regional um, manager, sorry, <laughs> the re regional <laughs> minister uh, from Heba, and he's, he's one of the musicians today. So welcome. And we welcome, you know, I know um, all musicians who are joining us who are supporting us today. So we just give God thanks. You know, he has provided us, God went ahead of pastor and he provided us with all that we need and we continue to hold on to that. Housekeeping, um, the toilets are through the door, double doors on my right. And there is um, nappy changing um, facilities. Please, if you haven't done so, can you please turn your mobile off I'll make sure there's in silent so as not to disturb the service. Fire alarm, if the fire alarm does go off, you will be escorted wherever, uh, by the safest route wherever you are in the building. And we have got stewards and we have got deacons uh, along monitoring the corridor as well. So, you know, just don't panic. We will get you out of the building. Offering and ties, if you wish to give offering electronically, you can go to the church's website and you can give your offering there or if you want to make a donation, okay. And just to say, you know, Maxine has asked me to say on behalf of her and her, her four children, a special thank you to City Road Baptist Church for the donation that we have uh, made to the family. Uh, the diaconate made a decision to, uh, to make a donation on behalf of City Road Baptist Church to the family. So, you know, they're expressing their um, appreciation of that. Okay. And, you know, um, Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 says, We must pay the most careful attention to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. So today, as we hear the word, we just remember and hold on to those. You know, Pastor, the last uh, prayer meeting we had, um, this, he, he told us a theme for 2024, and that is, I want to know Christ. So, you know, that is legacy to us, that we reflect on that and, yes, say, I want to know Christ, not only to know about him, but to know him. And that's pastor's legacy to us, um, for us as, you know, whether we're believers or not, that we know him, because a lot of us say we believe and we know of him, but we don't really know him. So we need to reflect on that. Notice sheet, we have got the notice sheet, and as you can see, dedicated to Pastor Gordon with his, um, you know, picture at the front. Okay, so, um, Today, following service, there will be refreshments. So please stay and join the family and join us in having some refreshments. And that will be in the room uh, along the corridor and you will be directed to it. Our uh, regular events uh, during the week continue except for Tuesday. Uh, the Tuesday um, home group has been canceled so you know those who attend Tuesday home group at 1 30 
there will be no 130 home group here at City Road. And next week, it's our Holy Communion service. There will be the deacons meeting has also been deferred until the 19th of February. And you will see the, the funeral service in, um, information on the back of the notice sheet. Uh, Pastor Gordon's uh, uh, funeral service will be at Cannon Street Church, and it will be on the 13th of February, and that will be at 10.30, okay, at Cannon Street Church. Uh, we also continue to remember Sister Maisie and Sister Daisy, who's here, and uh, they have now got a date for the funeral, which I'll share with you next week, of a brother that died early December. It's been a long time coming. Monday the 5th, we have got uh, a prayer and fasting here. Please come and join in as we pray. And please remember prayer. Please pray for City Road Baptist Church as we go through this challenging time uh, without a minister. So, you know, keep us in our prayer. And also for the congregation, because, you know, and the house band especially, as, you know, they, they, they you know, deal with, with pastor leaving us so suddenly. So thank you. Uh, the emotional support, I will come back to you about that later uh, when I've um, discussed with Pastor Scott um, how we go forward with that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Maxine. We normally have our offering right now, but I'm, I'm going to ask for the memory verse um, before we do the offering. So it is customary at City Road uh, that we have um, the sermon preached the week before and from the sermon there is a memory verse that we challenge our, our members to remember uh, and to share the, on the following Sunday. So is there anybody? Go ahead. Sister Pauline. Yes, go ahead. Does she need a microphone? Is there a float? Can we have a microphone for Sister Pauline, please? So based on the service last week, this is the memory verse that came from it. Go ahead. They're worthless because of what Christ has done for us. Bless the Lord. For those of you who didn't hear clearly, we're going to put it up on the screen so that we can all say it together. Is that all right, Ruth? Off we go. Let's say it all together. But. Thank you. And the memory verse we would like to, you to remember for next week is from this week's sermon, which is from Psalm. And I believe it's, let me see if I can remember, Psalm 27 verse 5. There we go. This is what we want to remember for next week. Can we say this all together, please? Four. Isn't that worth saying twice? Yes. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. We'll now have our offering, please, stewards. I have to say, just to prepare you, that after our offering, we will have a message from Pastor himself. Not here in person, obviously, but just to prepare you.
Because we couldn't do it without you. So we pray that you will bless it, multiply it. It's only a small portion of what you have given unto us. So Father God, we thank you and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, as our dear pastor would say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. said um, over the past few weeks is that what has taken place is more than coincidence. God has been in it all. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity of hearing pastor's final sermon here in this building. The title of the sermon was Love in Action and the words were poignant. I'd like you to have a listen. Ruby, you have gold, you have platinum, all these things that you work with. Now there are those who couldn't afford gold and some would, could afford a base metal or silver but they would want these metals to be coated with gold. But you know what happened in time? Over time it wears off. And the true colors come through. Allow Christ to be inside of you so he comes out of you. Not just something you put on occasionally because it makes you look good. And I want to tell you, everyone knows what love is. Everyone in whatever language. Love is, you know, one language. He says it does not dishonor others. So what Paul is saying, if you identify any trace of these things within your, your, your um, personality, within your character, then seek to evade, you know, just get rid of them. But I tell you, it's a hard thing. Because you have gold, which you have 9 carat, you have 14 carat, you have 18, you have 20, 24 carat is pure gold. And in order to get rid of 
the metals that are mixed with the nine through to the 22 carat, what you do, you smelt the gold, you, you melt it down till it's liquid, and then you, 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 you sift out the metal that is not gold. If you want to be like Christ, be prepared for the melting. In verse 14, it says, bless those who persecute you. Now this is hard love. Further on it says, Paul says, you know, because it'd be like you're pouring coals of fire upon their head. You know? <laughs> Don't do it because of you're thinking that. But see their need. Now, we can only do certain things if the Spirit strengthens us. Because when someone is persecuting you, it isn't the natural thing to want to bless them. However, if the Spirit of God is within you, if you are allowing the Spirit to get out of that, oh, I'm not going to do it, then you be, start to relax. Bless those, he says, who persecute you. Now, what is persecution? It is not just a one-off act, you know. It's someone who continually are doing things to present you in a bad light, to harm you, to hurt you. And they, they just keep on doing it, keep on doing it time and time again. Now someone parking in front of my drive is in the persecution, but it's very frustrating. And it could rob me of my peace, and I have to remember that, you know, you, you, know, you said you're not going to get into anything with drivers. Okay, he's blocking your drive, see if you can get round. And if you're going to speak to them, just be a bit calmer. Someone was telling me a story that a child asked the mother whether a donkey was a Christian. This is why, well, it has a long face, and these Christians always seem to have long faces. When someone will look at you, is the joy of the Lord evident in you? Is there a glow in you? Is there a irrespective of what you're going through? Be patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. My sisters, my brothers, trouble will come this year. You're going to have some hard times. But know that more than coincidence. Um, Pastor always said that we had problems with people parking across the drive. I don't know what pastor was doing wrong, but we had his car delivered to the drive, and the, a neighbor came and parked in front of his car because they knew that pastor's car wasn't going anywhere. I wrote a note, and I put it on the front of the car. There's been no parking there ever since. So I don't know what pastor was doing wrong, but obviously he had his... <laughs> <laughs> We've had no trouble ever since. <laughs> I'm going to ask you if you came prepared to give um, a tribute on behalf of Pastor. If you'd, if you'd raise your hands so that we, we know how many we're dealing with. Two? Three? Okay. All right. Um, can we? Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to do five, five tributes, no longer please than three minutes. Can we just please be respectful of the time and of others who would like to say something? Five three minute tributes before our praise and worship, and then we will do another five thereafter. I have to say that if you are, and you know who you are, if you are already giving, saying something on the day of the funeral, then I'm going to ask you just to stand down so that I'm given an opportunity for somebody to speak today. I'm going to ask Laurel if she would start the ball rolling. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, visitors. Um, good morning, Gordon's family. 
Um, it's so happy to see everyone here this morning and in this assembly, but it's sad because of this occasion. I just want to say, before I go into my tribute, um, Sister Maxine, you're a strong woman. Very strong. You're very strong. And I can say to you and the rest of your family, there are trials in life, as the writers say, which seems to understand. There are trials in life I would not know to call on the Lord and know the joys of answered prayer. And that's what I want to say to you. No, I will go into my message, my, my tribute. Um, Pastor Reverend Gordon, he was very special. He was unique in everything he do. I managed to get acquainted to uh, Reverend Gordon more when my mom passed away, because mom was a member here. And he took the funeral service. And then a few years after, my uncle died, and he took the funeral service. And I can say he was wonderful. And then only last year, he received me back here in fellowship. Uh, maybe I was the last one. I was the last one to receive, receive in fellowship. And then I saw him last when I came to his brother's funeral um, on the Tuesday. And while at the repast, um, we were sitting down around the table. And you know, he just go around greeting everybody. And he walked past and he said, do you want a cup of tea? And I said, no, thank you. But I don't regret not taking the cup of tea, because I'll tell you why later on. I'll tell you when I'll take that cup of tea, because it was prepared for me some other way. Um, anyway, I'm going to give the memory, the tribute, which is memories of you. You have left us happy memories. Can you hear me? You have left us happy memories now that your life is done, and many tears will ever fall and dry before the sun. Death is just a part of life, and for some, it's the end of sorrow and strife. But when you live in the hearts of those you love, remember, then you never die. For in times of sorrow, love heals, and as long as love remains, it can help soften the pain. Those we love don't go away, they are with us every day. And though they cannot see or hear, because of their memories, they are always near. But time cannot heal the heartache and pain or stop the silent tear. It cannot vanish our memories of those we love so dear. How we wish you could stay it on. But before we knew, you were gone. Oh, we wish we had more chance to see you smile and dance. But you left us quietly without a fuss and broke the heart of all of us. We know that you are not alone for loved ones that went before gladly welcome you home. The world is now a lonely place without your smiling, beautiful smiling face. Your memories will never fade away, but live in our hearts today. Um, before I close, um, I just want to say this. Um, I wrote this poem, by the way. Um, I just want to say... <laughs> I just want to say that um, just two lines of this song, and if you know it, a few, just about three lines, and you can join in, and then I'll tell you why I didn't have my cup of tea. Around the throne of God in heaven, thousands of children stand, children whose sins are all forgiven. Holy, happy band, sing in glory, 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 sing in glory, glory, glory. 
That's why I didn't take that cup of tea because I wanted to have that cup of tea with the church fellowship members and everyone for Christ around the throne of God in heaven when we can sit down with Reverend Gordon and we all have our cup of tea with him. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sister Maxine, it's going to be hard. And don't let anybody tell you it's not going to be hard. It's going to be hard. But you know something? Jesus wept. Don't bottle it in. He wept. Just remember that, okay? Just let it out. Don't be scared. Let it out because that softened the pain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. What can I say about Pastor Gordon? He was a people person. He was kind, and he brought comfort to all of us who need it. He was a perfectionist. He had an infectious laugh. Because sometimes when we're around the back and he's in here and he starts to sing, all you have to do is to sing with him. And most of all, he was the son to me that I never had. I will truly, truly miss him. Thank you. Good morning, church. to start from, but I'm going to start because I don't want to cry. Anyway, 62 years ago next month, I was married in this church. My wife and I is over there. And we moved from this area and we went all over in the last place to go in Erdington and I was going to Baptist Church in Erdington. I don't know how comes somebody invite me to a service here and we met Maxine and Pastor Gordon and we introduced each other and I told them where I go. Maxine says to me, no, you got to come to this church. And ever since I started to come back to this church, I pastor do my vows when I was 50 years, I done 50 years, it, it, it renewed my vows. And everywhere I go is pastor in my barn you know? So he's a friend, he's a brother, he's a minister, he's everything to me. We correspond with each other. The last time we corresponded was the 11th of January. When I spoke to him, I was lying on my settee. I was said to my wife, I'm going to ring pastor. She said, no, leave him alone. I said, no, I'm going to ring him. I rang him and I said, my wife says to me, that is not pastor. He sounds so low. He's not well. I said, no, he's tired. 
And I said, Pastor, put the phone down and go to have a rest. Not knowing that Maxine was with him at that time, he's preparing his service. But that man is a rock. You know, I was going through the television and was it yesterday? And I go through YouTube and I flick up. And who come up before me, Pastor? And he was singing, You Are My Rock. And I shout to my wife upstairs, I say, come. And she came down and we sing. He was into a black t-shirt. I don't know where we took that from. But he was singing. And I sang the song with him like, you know. I can't sing, but I home. But I'm going to miss a friend. He never ring me, if he's in the house and ring me, or I ring him, he said, let's pray for you. He never, if he come in my house, and he never comes out and let's say, put his hand on my shoulder, he said, I pray for you, because I'm not well. And he knows that, and he always pray for me. But God knows best, and Sister Maxine, you are the rock. You have, have it today with you. And he left it there, he left the legacy with you. And I appreciate you, all, the, all your operate. And the Gordon family, keep the cheer, keep up, cheer up. He's gone somewhere. He's, he's, oh. You see, my wife says to me the other day, I was hoping that pastor lead me through the church and lead me out. Now we got to lead him out, but he's accepting somebody. Accept, he's going to accept us. So, God is with God. Thank you very much. Morning, church. Um, Maxine, I'll just send you all my condolences to you and your family. Um, I knew Glenn from Cannon Street Memorial Baptist Church, and we, there was a lot of young people growing up with him, and you know, he was someone who could. Um, we could talk to, but I remember a time when I, I'm just going to be honest because this is my relationship with Glenn. Um, I remember a time when I, you know, we didn't always stay in church and things went wrong. And Glenn, you know, he reached out to me. He came personally to see me at my mum's house. And he just encouraged me to have, still have a relationship with God and everything. And I remember that conversation so well. This is going back 40 years, maybe. Um, and the thing I remember about Glenn, when it was Neville's nine nights, we went, came in through the door and the first two people I saw was Maxine and Glenn. And Maxine was asking me how my leg was. And I said, oh, it's not too bad. And I was saying, hi, Glenn, I haven't seen you for ages. How are you doing? And he was having a conversation with me. And then I looked at him and I went, wait, do you even know who you're talking to? And he went, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told him who I was and he just like gave me the biggest, hug and green and even at um, Neville's funeral he I've got a video on my phone and I could just hear him laughing because I was taking a picture of the flowers and he was there laughing but you know at the <clears throat> at the service itself he said if you didn't know God you never know if it's your last day you might not see see somebody today you might not see somebody tomorrow and you know if you think about everything that he said, he was true to his word about everything because as bad and as sad as we're feeling, we know where he's gone and we know where he is. But, you know, I just, I'm just thanking him for being a person that reached out to us as young people because back in the day, you either would be leave church or nobody would reach out to you. So, you know, he stepped out of his comfort zone to talk to me because I was thinking, Look at this guy, he's so posh. How does anybody talk like that? I never knew anybody who spoke like he did. And um, I'm glad that he reached out to me, but I just want to send my condolences to the family and, and behalf of a lot of young people who want to be here who can't say. He's reached out to so many people. And we just want to say thank you, Glenn. Thank you. And I'm going to give you a clap. Good morning, church. Well, my heart is so broken because before I went away to America, pastor prayed for me for traveling mercies. 
And now when I heard that he's gone and he's no longer here with us, I can't begin to tell you how much I felt inside. He was such a hard working pastor. He was here and there for every one of us and the community. He prayed for you and he support you in everything. And to know that he's no longer here with us, I can't begin to tell you how much I felt inside. He was a very loving, good pastor. And I don't know, but I, all I can say, I know he's somewhere around God's throne, singing and clapping as he used to do, and praising his God. Oh God, I don't know, but we all have to go on. I'm not here to tell you anything about my own self, but I have been through the same thing I can say to Maxine and the family. I lost my daughter, my eldest daughter, at the age of 44. She did not live, she just went to the bathroom with her little girl, and she did not come out the bathroom. She went down on the floor and that was it and she passed away. And glory be to God, I can stand here. I know he will carry you all through, no matter what you are going through. It's hard. I lost my two brother with a massive heart attack and they never survived it. So I know whatever you are going through, the family, God will see you through it. His promise is true. He said, he never leave you alone. He's there to comfort you and guide you, no matter what you are going through. I can't say much because I never hardly come up here and say anything, but I always praise my God in the way I can. And I know he hear me and answer me. And I don't know. My birthday was the 2nd of January, my 90th birthday, and God has spared me. God had kept me and spared my life, no matter what I was going through. He gave me the strength and courage to carry on, and I'm giving him thanks and honor to his name for me to stand here this morning. I only came back from America last week. I spent six weeks with my nieces them, and they take so much care of me. It was like my own daughter. Oh my God, I can't explain. Thank you all for the flowers, and God bless you all. Maxine, be strong in the Lord. I've been there, I know what you're going through. Because nobody in here hardly know what I've been through. Same situation. And God is there for you all to take you through. Still mining church. Afternoon. Still. Afternoon. Well, I did say mining before. Okay. Well, it's hard to start. Hope I don't stay very long. I knew Pastor. He called me the little one. Nothing else but the little one. And I always think of him. And this morning, or this afternoon, I stand here today with a heavy heart. As a mother who feels like she has lost her own son. I have known Pastor Gordon Glenn for over 20 years. And I will miss his loving presence and reassurance. Glenn was someone you could go to with your problems and worries, and he would freely reassure and comfort you with a true heart of humility. He would not only help those here within the church, but also anyone who sought comfort from 
of the street. I think all of us here will agree that we will miss his love, his guidance, and his counsel. Sleep on and take your rest, our pastor. And as I am here at the moment, I know that all of us will miss him, each and every one. And as for the garden family, I'm saying to them, keep courage, hold on, because someday we hope to meet Glenn. And when you meet him, or if I do before you, I'll ask him to play that saxophone. <laughs> that saxophone, I don't know how many people in here know that saxophone, but he promised me to play it, but he didn't get to. I'll meet him. Have a good day. praise and worship. We're going to go into, I was about to say lighten the mood. Uh, thank you everyone who shared. We're going to go into a section of praise and worship. The songs that we have chosen were pastor's favorites. So would you stand with us please? Good afternoon. One, two, There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one no one, no one like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift. We lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. You deserve the glory.
Amen. You can smile, you know. You can smile, but there's no one like God. Glory to God. Right, we're going to have a bit of fun now. We're going to have a bit of fun. <laughs> Glory to God. For the last time I did this at Neville's funeral and Glenn was singing it, so we're going to enjoy it. <laughs>
in the world. going to move into our second lot of tributes. I'm going to ask Gloria if she'd start. I'm going to ask if you'd make your way around there, especially those in the overflow. If you have something that you'd like to say on behalf of Pastor, I'm going to ask you to make your way over. We're going to start with Gloria, and then we're going to go to Michael, and then we're going to take it from there, okay? I'm just going to go straight into it. Greetings to you all, wherever you are, in the, the online, in the service, in the overflows. And my dear sister Maxine, Keith, and the Gordon family. Tribute to our pastor and friend, Glenn. Veron. Richard, our son, and I sincerely express our condolences to you and the Garden family. During this sad and difficult time, we thank our God firstly for the blessing that Reverend Glenn Gordon and Maxine, our friends, has been to us as a family, and secondly, for Maxine, your faithfulness, your strength, standing beside Glenn along the way. The memories of Reverend Glenn Gordon will remain with us forever. They go back a long way, 40 years Plus. A poignant moment was his spiritual input at the point of my illness 
when carrying Richard. I was three months pregnant and constantly sick. I and family were naturally concerned for him. It was my very first pregnancy and didn't know what to expect or how to respond. It was that moment when Reverend Glenn, not yet an ordained minister, spoke into the situation prophetically, declaring despite how it appeared that my baby was going to be strong and healthy. Also, that I was carrying a boy. I determined to name him Richard from that day on. Fast forward, not even five months, and Richard was here, born by emergency C-section at seven months and three weeks old on the 31st of December, 1984. His weight was just three pounds. When my consultant said, it's a boy and he's strong and healthy, I instantly remembered who said it first. Who spoke the light of God, miraculous promise, gift against the backdrop of darkness and fear? My friend, Glenn. Richard and I stayed in hospital to recover. It was for a month, but felt like forever. The monotony and uncertainty was broken again by Glenn. I remembered one particular visit. He scooped Richard up in his arm with impressive confidence and assurance he prayed over him and called him a mighty man of valor. It struck me, I look it up. I discovered this was the description given to another young man for whom the odds against looked too great, Gideon. I regarded it as Richard's spiritual name. And at the age of 18, Richard took it on by deed polled as his legal unofficial middle name. Clap, yes. That seed in the form of a prof prophetic utterance is continuing to be a fruit until this day. Richard is now ahead of year at a secondary school with responsibility for over 250 children. That name, Gideon, repeatedly sparks plenty of conversation in the school as he explained the origin, the meaning of what many young people regard as an unusual name allowing Richard an ease and gentle way to introduce the things of God to a largely unchurched group. God, we thank you. This conversation, please help him build value relationships with generation of youth in over 12 years at the same school. I am sure this is just one of many testimonies and examples you will hear of the impact Reverend Glenn La Glenn's life made and continue to make in the lives of those he touched. He has truly served as our Savior's hands, feet, and prophetic voice throughout his life. 
Reverend Glenn didn't need a pulpit or a congregation to discharge God's will. As a result, I cannot think of Richard as an unborn, a tiny infant, or a leader of young people without thinking of Reverend Glenn too. We read that God's word never returned to him void, but he needs faithful obedience from the precious dear, faithful and beloved like Reverend Glenn. We know he is resting in peace, and I'll be honest, I am struggling. Nearly finish. And we will continue to pray for your strength, comfort, and peace to cope with the reality of his passing. Let God comfort and strength strengthen you as you remember in a sense those we love and who loved us don't go away they walk beside us every day unseen always near speaking to us in the words of their hands the impact they have had on this land until we see him again in glory the seeds he has planted continue the story of God's great work through women and men as greatly demonstrated through the life of our friend Glenn. Thank you. I know people want to share and we could be here all day, but I'm gonna just ask you please in respect of Maxine and everyone else, please keep it to a minimum. You may have prepared a lot, I understand that. I feel that, but please, there's a lot of people who want to share. Please cut it down. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, church family. This will be the shortest. <laughs> you know, normally, I don't know when pastor said three minutes, so he always have to stop me. But not today. <laughs> Maxine, you're a strong woman. And you remind me of the woman in the Bible, Ruth, and all those women. For you to stand here today and do what you're doing. I don't know, but I know you're not standing in your strength. You're standing in the strength of the Lord. And we <laughs> You know, I'm going to miss pasta cooking. He used to like cookie soup and fried dumpling. And I look forward to it. And pasta never afraid to encourage the men. Men, because whenever he get a chance, he always speak to the men and say, go and check yourself for prostate cancer. And he always say that. Every time, actually, he stand on the pulpit, he say that. He said, don't be afraid to go to the doctor. So, men, but we know that. Pastor Glenn is at a better place. He's out of this sinful world, all what's going on around us. The time gonna come when some of us gonna say, we, we, we would be better off going home to glory. And I know that Pastor is with the Lord. And you know, there is a saying, good clergy never die. They call for higher service. Yes, and very good afternoon to you. This is going to be a short, um, short tribute to Pastor Glenn. It's called uh, Irish Blessing, and it talks about the road and God, and God be with you, and the stars. Okay, me and my colleagues are going to try and deliver it in a cappella.
significant way in which Pastor Gordon touched my life. He always used to say at some time or other, when God speaks to you, be prepared to respond. That touched my daughter when she was this high. She must have been about between three and five, and she didn't know what to do with it. So as we left church the one day, she asked Pastor Gordon, she said, when God speaks to me, how do I know when he's speaking to me? I can't hear him. And he stooped down and he literally said, leave it with me, Melissa. And the next week, I don't know if it was part of his sermon, he built the whole sermon around when God speaks to you, the different ways in which he does so. So instead of her going out to Sunday school with everybody, she stayed in church and listened to how God speaks to each and every one of us, the little children, because she voiced what a lot of adults wouldn't or couldn't say because of the thought and perception that you ought to know. So that's the most significant way in which Pastor Gordon, he had time for everybody. God bless you, all the Gordon family. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Sandra from Cannon Street, and I'm sitting in the overflow. There's a lot of Cannon Street people in there. Um, I just want to say that I thank Glenn for when we had Sunday school at 3 o'clock in the 80s, um, because last year we'd done a Bible study, and my friend said, how come you know all these verses without going in your Bible? I said, because Glenn taught us at 3 o'clock till 4. And after a few weeks, we had a certificate and his name was on it, and um, I just remember him for that. But um, I last saw him on Tuesday at Neville's funeral, and um, when Keith texted me on Friday to say he'd had a stroke, I just went weak. I didn't even go to work that day. I just felt weak and everything. And um, I just want to say, may God give you all strength to the Gordon family, because even though other people around were feeling weak, don't know how you were feeling, but Maxine, you are very strong, as everyone has said, and may God give you all strength for when the funeral comes and for the coming months. Thank you. Good morning, church. Uh, my name's Paul, and I've got to say to the Gordon family, thank you because you have been the inspiration. You allowed Pastor Gordon to view everybody here, to make everybody here feel comfortable. But not only here, you could see him on the street and he would never pass you. He always had time for you. And uh, I'll never forget that. Unfortunately, during the COVID period, we lost my mom and my dad six days apart through COVID, but Pastor Gordon, the second he found out about it, was there at a flash. We will never forget how much Pastor meant to this family, to our family. We've had several funerals here from uncles, aunts, and he was always there. You get to the cemetery, Pastor Gordon was the senior that was there, you could, people didn't know the songs, but he would belt them out for you and you could follow along with him. He was such a wonderful man. 
and he will be sadly missed by us all as the showing in the church today. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for giving me this opportunity, Maxine. Um, Pastor Gordon was an inspiration to all of us. Um, from the youngest to the very eldest. And I mean, I had great respect for Pastor Gordon, Maxine, everything, but also because he, he comes from St. Anne's in Jamaica. <laughs> and those of us who are Jamaicans, you know what it's like. You always want somebody near to, you know, where you come from. But he was a wonderful, wonderful man. And I have been and seen him sometimes when I'm troubled about something. And he makes you feel as if it's nothing. It's all right. It'll be okay. And the way he talks to you through things, such an inspirational uh, leader we had. Thank you for sharing him with us all, all these years. We have been blessed. And I think... Um, when you go to see Pastor Gordon or you speak to him, you come away feeling that much better and you feel that thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing us and all the family. I, I for one, am not surprised that Sister Maxine is so strong because as they say, behind every successful woman, man, the strong woman. And so we want to give God thanks for Pastor Glenn's life, but also for all of his family that allowed us, all of us, who don't belong to this church family or any church family that he's been a part of, to still be, have been affected by him. For us to have been affected by him means that his family had to give time for him to spend with us, and we are grateful for that. But I just wanted to come up here and say that he has affected my life incredibly in the, not the many years that I have known him and not least because he has in an indomitable faith. I'm so glad that my sister came up here and spoke about his prophetic anointing because he wasn't on a hilltop shouting out like Jeremiah and those guys did before. His prophetic gift was undeniable, undeniable. And he spoke into many of our lives and the truth has shown itself. So, and many more I'm sure in years to come will show itself. But one of the things I really appreciate about Pastor Glenn the most, apart from his speaky spokiness, which I really loved, uh, was just that he was a man of in, uh, integrity. Integrity, unquestionable integrity. If somebody questions that, we go talk outside afterwards. But unquestionable integrity. And I liked that as a man of God, his pastoral heart was just something to behold. And yet, he was also a man who did not ramp. He spoke truth to you unequivocally. He told you the truth, and he wasn't harsh with it. He said it firmly, but yet you still came away feeling loved. That is a gift, to be able to have a pastoral heart that cares but still is unafraid to tell you absolute truth. There are few that were made like him. And we say thank you, Jesus. Uh, good afternoon, church. Um, I will be quick because I don't know Pastor Glenn Ford uh, Gordon. So why am I standing here? Because I met him once once he came to serve and pray for my family we've just had a bereavement and i'm here on behalf of my family my cousin michelle who's just lost her dad um my uncle ivan joseph and pastor came um we were all around the bed shocked because he went in the day before and then he passed 6 30 on the 2nd of december and i myself was in great shock at the hospital, because we were a big family, we were all around the bed, and my aunt Aurelia, who belongs to this church, she called her pastor, and she said, I'm gonna try and call him. I don't know if he's gonna come, because 
He's got quite a few deaths in his own family, um, but I'm going to call him. And if any of you, and I'm sure there's people here grieving and mourning, and you know about death in a hospital, and they give you a certain amount of time to sit with the deceased, and we were waiting for Pastor to come, and I really wanted him to come because otherwise it was going to be me that has to do the praying. Um, and then I did start praying, and then he was phoning my aunt, saying he can't get into the hospital, he can't get, he can't find the ward, he can't. But God led him, and he got there. And when he came into the room, and I finished praying, he said, I don't need to pray now because I've heard your prayer. And I said, no, Pastor. I said, I need you to pray for me because I am in such shock. And I just want to say thank you to him, to God for sending him to serve us and pray for us in our hour of need. And I believe on that fateful day, Pastor, Pastor Clinford Gordon is going to hear, welcome, your good and faithful servant. And um, <laughs> I must commend his wife as I sat there with my cousin and one's kept referring and I'm like, is that, is that his wife? I can't believe because you can see I'm ready to cry because I'm grieving for my uncle. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Pastor Glenn. Thank you. <laughs> Hmm? Tag team. <laughs> Tag team, yeah. My name is Delian, formerly member of Cannon Street Memorial Baptist Church. And first of all, I'd like to give condolence to the Gorn family, especially to Sister Maxine. I don't know how she's conducting this service today, because I couldn't do it. <laughs> so please continue to pray for the Gorn family. And my brief tribute for Pastor Glenford Gordon is I could see him as a encourager. He was always encouraging the men. Even if he had business, you always have time for you to talk about business. And he's a man full of plans, full of ideas. <laughs> and I'm sure he's got many plans he had in mind, yeah? <laughs> as he was always encouraging me to take another step further, go further. You could do this, you could do that. So I just want to encourage all the men. And especially with the prostate problems, me and him used to have conversations about it. And I would also like to encourage all men of certain age to go and get yourself checked out, as our sister says. Thank you. I'm Roderick, the younger brother of Delian. I said the younger should go first, but can't tea for all what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, we, Glenn, Glenn was our pastor at Cannon Street some 40 plus years ago. I remember him even, even being training the young one in boys' grade at a young age of 12 and 13, training how to be young men. I could say Glenn has always, always, always been an encourager for me. Always, always, even like any time you see him, he's always, he never tell you, give you anything negative. Never, ever, ever. You know, he's, he's a great man. We, we miss him, so when they've gone, we always have to look and say, well, what has he done? How can we benefit? Can we carry on the good at attributes? That's how, I, that's how I look at someone when they've gone. What have they done good? How can we carry on that? And never forget that. Our condolences with the family and, of, and the church family. But he's a great man, he's gone to a better place. And he, I know him, he will want us to carry on and carry on doing the work in Jesus' name, amen. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. Peace and blessings to the Gordon family. My dear sister Maxine, I want to thank you for allowing God to use you to set the spiritual bar for us high. It has been set high. And I couldn't think of anything to say, but just to use a couple of excerpts from a poem that's befitting of the Reverend Glenford Gordon. When God wants to drill a man and thrill a man and skill a man, 
when God wants to mold a man to play the noblest part, when he yearns with all his heart to create so great and bold a man that all the world should be amazed. Watch his method, watch his ways. How he ruthlessly, how he bends him and never breaks when his good he undertakes. How he uses whom he chooses. But every art induces him to try his splendor out. How often he disappoints whom he sacredly anoints. With what wisdom he will hide him, never minding what betide him. When God wants to name a man, and fame a man, and tame a man. When God wants to shame a man to do his heavenly best. Then doth God show his plan, and the world now knows that God had found a man when God wants to drill a man. Thank you. Hi, um, I will keep this brief, I promise. But um, I just want to say um, thank you for, for uh, Pastor Gordon because of his um, encouraging. I'm glad somebody else said it, so it's not just me saying this. He's a, he's a real encourager. And sometimes encouraging can, encouragement can come like a, 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 warm, a warm meal or it could come like a, a wet blanket. So in other words, sometimes it could be harsh, but it's what you need to get by. So anyway, um, he encouraged me to come on the piano and those who know me know that that's one of the areas that I like, um, and I like to play the piano, I like music. The other area is my moat. I like to chat. Now, the thing is, is that I could be a very, it could be an annoyance. My, my head teacher is here, but I used to work, and I used to do the assemblies, and she said, bye, keep it short. The children need to go back to class. She didn't say it like that, but that's paraphrasing. So she said, just keep it short. So I'm used to that. They say all my life, my mum's here, even here. She said, try hustle up, nobody. Go sleep, no? That's my mum. That's what she would say. But then, what used to happen here is that I would, as um, Pastor Gordon is preaching here, I would say the scriptures verbatim over there. Because one of the things my mum did teach me is to read your Bible, pray every day. And it says in due time, the words that God has put in your heart will come out of your mouth. Right? And it will flow from your mouth. So the pastor's sitting there and he goes, he goes Fitz. Come up and bring a word of exhortation. He's just right. And I, I'll, I'll tell you something that will encourage you. That comes from the word of God because I love the scriptures. So he says, Fitz, I want you to preach. I said, that's a silly thing for you to ask of me. <laughs> it's a silly thing you're asking me. But he says, Fitz, I'm going to hold you. He goes, I'm, I, isn't that true? So said, I want you to preach in here on this service. It's on video. And he goes, there's a few. There's more than one. And he said, I'm going to give you the opportunity to preach. To bring the word. If you, even if you don't want to call it preaching, bring the word of God. Because I can clearly see that it's in you. Now, that takes a lot of guts. Because it's going on on the airwaves. I could say anything. But he trusted me. And he guided me and encouraged me to bring the word of God. Now, for me, it's that, but it could be anything. Like, if there's anything that you wanted to do, here's a man that will ask you to do it or put you in a position where you can. And the scripture, it says in James, and I'll finish. It says in James 2.16, If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well and well fed, but does nothing to the physical need, what good is it? Do you see saying that? What, make, what sense of you saying, go in peace and do your best, if you're not going to be there to encourage them and to give them the, the tools in order to do it? That's what Pastor did. So if you're all like-minded, there's enough people here to change the world. There is. So it's up to you if you want to take that mantle and share it with um, Pastor Maxine and share that mantle and change the world. Because it seems like we're all like-minded here and we can all do the same. Amen. <laughs> Good, good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. My name is Trevor. I don't know if many of you know me. You know my wife and I. Um, I'm not even a member of the church, but I love coming to this church. I must say, Sister Maxine, I respect your dignity, ma'am. I don't think I'm, I'm a man. I think I'm tough. I'm 83, nearly. But I could not do it. But anyway, as the lady says, Behind every strong man is a strong woman.
Anyway, um, I, I've only known, I've known Pastor for about six, seven years when he did my mother-in-law's funeral. And I didn't come to church. But when he did my um, uncle, um, Louis, you know, when he did my wife's uncle's funeral, I got, we went to see him, I got talking to Pastor. After, you know, while they were doing the, you know, the, the usual at, at the funeral. And I said, where are you from? He was talking, and he says, you're from um, St. Catherine Bogwalk. I said, oh, he says, he says, he went and buried his, his dad years ago. So I said, oh, that's nice. He says, where your dad, was what, what, what your dad living here? He says, yes. He said, he worked in a post office. So I said, is that so? He says, yes. I said, where? He said, Birmingham. And I says, what is his name? He says, um, Sydney Garden. All right, Sydney Garden. I says, his name rings a bell. And it's so happened that I work for the post office, the royal, in the letter side, and your father-in-law worked um, in the telecom side, right? Okay. So we, we, got, we got talking, and since that we started, I started coming to, well, I didn't come to church much, but I always come to the watch night. But then I started coming to, and my main pastor gets talking, you know, and he says, he, when he, a lady passed away, I think her name was um, Kay, and she was buried in Portland. To my, oh, that's right, okay. And he says, he's going home. So I says, he says, he let, he let go to the funeral, but it's far. I said, where are you, where are you living? He said, Bog Walk. He says, it's about three hours. I said, no, Pastor, no, no. I said, just go by Walker's Wood, Pern Gully, Ochi. I, I know what, you'll be in Portland. <laughs> I says, if you get hungry, stop in Boston, have some jerk. And that's this kind of person your husband was. But anyway, when I, well, because torture short kind of time is going, when I heard that pastor passed, and I've told you, Maxine, apart from my father, his death has really, really shocked me. You know, I, I, you know it, it's really, really, uh, when, when my wife got a message, I'm a, like, pastor, I love my super today, and I couldn't have my dinner. You know, that's just my wife. But anyway, I'm, going, I'm just going to say a little, uh, do a bit of a mixing DJ thing, which I'll see them. I think, as somebody said me this, they a thing from Jamaica. He says, Pastor is gone to um, a place up there where the streets are paved with gold. And there's someone there to hold his hand. And I'm going to do it with a DJ condensing. Somebody came to look for Pastor, but they didn't know he'd passed away. And they went to his home and they knocked. And somebody in the neighbor says, who are you looking for? And who are you looking for? But he's not there. And the chap said, okay, I'm going to his church where he's a preacher in, in City Road. And he came there and the usher says, I know you're looking for, but he's not there. You can keep searching, but he's somewhere around the throne of God. And And I hope, Sister, Sister Maxine, we all do as pastor, as the life you live and showed us, that when we get there, I hope I get there, and you will be there, pastor will be there to hold our hand and take us to the throne of God, where he has prepared a place for us. Make thank you. Good afternoon, church. Lots of you mightn't know me. I'm Bob Spanton. I haven't been well for the past four years. I haven't been coming to church, but pastor come to the house. He prays with me. And I try to be brief as I can. The 3rd of January, 2007, and my husband died in bed. Pastor came to see him and pray for him. And just as he was leaving, Len said, Pastor, can you do me a favor? And he said, sure, Len. And he said, not as a pastor, but as a friend. Please take care of Babs. And he said, I will. And he keep his promise. I've been in hospital several times, and he's there. He comes to the house, he prays. He phone, he prays. 
But most of all, last year, June, I went in hospital. I was in ITU for five days. They phoned my daughter, Jackie, said to come with the family. Jackie brought my next door neighbor and she ran past her. It was way after midnight and he came. I didn't know anything. I was wired up all over the machine, breathing for me. And he prayed and prayed and prayed. And three days after, same thing happened again. Jackie rang him and the following day was Father's Day. Jackie said, no, it's okay. Don't bother to come this time. He said, no, I'll be there. And he came again and he prayed for me and I'm here today and he's gone. He's gone. I, he was like a brother and he was a friend. He always checked on me, but most of all, I'm so glad. Christmas morning, I was at home and the bell rang. Jackie came to sort out the Christmas dinner and when Jackie opened the door, it was Glenn and Maxine. And we hugged each other and we talked and we prayed. And I didn't realize that was the last I was going to see him. I missed his call and I missed his visit. Maxine, thank you for sharing with us. Thank the Gordon family. Thank you, Han. Good afternoon, church. My name is Fred Tonto, and I'm pastor of Kingdom Grace Ministries. We meet in the overflow every Sunday after you've had your service. This one of my leaders, his name is Peter Amo. We're here to share a little tribute about Pastor Gordon. The very first thing that you perceive as a Christian when you meet Pastor Gordon is that it's someone who deeply loves the Lord Jesus. And it, it shows in the way he's joyful, it shows in the way he speaks to people, it shows in the way he cares for people. I've known him for about 10 years, that's how long we've been here. And in those 10 years, he's always asking about how our church is doing. I call him pastor or reverend, but he calls me brother. And in a way, he became like a mentor to me. I'll go to him, I mean, I'll text him, and then he'll tell me the times he's in the office, and I'll come to him and we'll sit and chat. Such a great blessing. I mean, my children were four and eight when we started here, and they're now, now in their teens. And the little one, he's 14 now, he keeps saying, I can't believe Reverend Gordon is gone. I want to end, as I said, we don't want, our time is already far spent. I want to end with the words of a hymn that was written in 1882. I'm sure most of us know it. It says, will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? The chorus or the refrain is, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. I thank God for uh, Maxine. It's because she's grounded in that love. That is why she's so stable. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Good afternoon, church. 
my name is Felix, I'm all the way from uh, Wolverhampton. I did not know Pastor much. I only met him once. And the once I met him, he really touched my heart. It is during the COVID period. We have not seen our daughter for three months, four months, and we are just agitated. How are we going to go and see this girl? And all of a sudden, I saw him and Mama at our doorstep with our daughter. That really touched my heart because for a pastor to do that, it means he's following what the love of Christ is saying. I said, I had a sermon on love, and he's really a true man of love. Amen. Mama, the Lord will be with you. Amen. Amen. I, won't say, I won't say much to you, but just to give you that song of Jesus Christ, because he lives you can face yes, tomorrow. tomorrow. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Lady Ma. I'm so sorry to know that I have lost my best friend. He was not only my pastor, he was a really good friend of mine. Over the years, I have known Pastor Gordon. He was very kind and was prepared to help anyone who was in need, financially or otherwise. He was devoted to serving, so he would be at the church many days of the week. When my sister passed away over in Nottingham, he was prepared to come and help me. And I appreciate that immensely. He look, whenever time I look around the church, there were so many things which I have noticed that he was involved with. All the windows, when he came here, he had them changed. He has the toilet changed. He has the carpet changed. And so he was that type of person who liked to see things looking good. He was well-spoken and immaculately dressed. You know, for some, for some reason or the other, I know time is running out. And, but please allow me. Because in times, I was going to sing this song. I just do two words. Just, just, just two words. <laughs> Be sympathetic. That's yes, one verse. All right. In time of these, you need you. In time of these, you need a savior. In time like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. My anchor holds and be the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. My uncle, I'll be this 
sordid wrong. Do you know, nothing, nothing happens by coincidence. This service is well and truly Holy Spirit led. It is fitting that we should end with one of the oldest members of our congregation. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor used to say, I don't know what I'm going to do when Bill goes. And now Bill is saying, I don't know what I'm going to do now that Pastor's going to hit, he's here. But that song, is, there's a message in there for him. I want to say thank you from my heart for your patience and thank you for all the lovely, lovely tributes of Glenn. Um, I want to say thank you also for your love and for your prayers and for your family. I am strong because you are strong. I am strong because you are behind me. I am strong because you have me covered. And I want to say thank you from my heart. We are now going to go into a time of intercessory prayers. Uh, who is praying for us? Thank you, Del. Let us pray. God of grace and God of mercy, on your people pour thy power. Merciful Father, we got no strength of our own. We come in the name of Jesus because Jesus told us, come in his name, bring our petition to the Father and he will answer. Because we believe and we got faith, merciful Father, we come and we bring our petition to you, my God. Lord, I present the garden family before you. You see, and you know all about them. What can I tell you that you don't know? You're a God of love, a God of mercy. Father God, I pray as they mourn that you'll strengthen them. You alone can give the strength that no one else can have. Merciful Father, you're a great comforter. You can comfort them when they feel low. Lord, pick them up, uphold them, especially Maxine and the children. Merciful Father, she'll have her sad moments, but as she's sadden and she mourn, she do not mourn like those that don't have no hope. Because merciful Father, we know that our hope is in you and you are a true foundation. When all fail, you never fail. You are the great I am. You are the beginning and the end. You are the almighty God, the merciful Father. So I pray that you'll just bless the garden family. Be with them, comfort them, strengthen them, guide them. Merciful Father, we know that your Holy Spirit is a comforter and he lives within us. He's a counselor. Merciful Father, hear our prayers today and as the speaker bring the message, speak through him to us, your people. Let the word that you want him to bring to us, he deliver. And as we leave here, we'll say it was good for us to be here because we have accept food, food for thought. We can go home and meditate upon what he has said. Father, you are our only source of help. When all fail, you never fail us. So I just bring the service before you and I bring the garden family before you because Lord, you can meet all needs. They are your children. You are their father. So have mercy upon them, I pray. Give them, bind them together as one, as a car that cannot be broken. And strengthen Maxine continuously because the children will look to her now. Father God, hear our prayers. The things we fail to ask you, fail not to grant unto us because we are your children and you are our Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
and welcome to um, this wonderful service we're having here today. Um, today, myself and my colleague is going to sing Faithful One. And just a little story before I sing this. Um, this song I learned many years ago when Pastor first came here and we're having a Bible study in Sister Dad's house on our city and Pastor raised his song. And this song has been on my heart and we're going to render it to you. Maybe not how pastor will do it, but God's grace. Praise God. Faithful one. <laughs>
so much for staying with us during this extended service. If you have to leave, uh, we perfectly understand. But it is with great delight that I hand you over to this man of God. I hope your appetites have been whetted and we are waiting with bated breath to hear what God has laid on his servant's heart. Can I pray with you? Yes. Almighty, most thank righteous you, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Mm. We thank you for this man of God. Hallelujah. We pray, dear God, that as he opens his mouth, that you will fill it. Mm. That you will fill it that you, with the words thank that you, you want your people to hear. Thank you, God. Empty our hearts, dear God, of all distractions that we Hallelujah. have this morning. And may we focus on you. Mm. Feed us, Heavenly Father, mm. with your living bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I know time's gone. And all the sermons have been preached. I'm hearing so many sermons here today. And, you know, as a preacher, when I hear sermons, I'm thinking, that's a sermon right there. And that's another one there. And I know some of you may have to go, but I'm not going to keep you long. And I'd just like to ask my darling wife, Pauline, Where's Sister Maxine? Sister Maxine, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. My da Here, darling. Maxine. Okay, I've got two minutes to say something. Come on. I think the cameras might be rolling here, Maxine, so I'm going to try and be as contained as I can. Can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Very briefly, a lot of people have talked about your strength today. And we know it's the Holy Spirit's Amen. strength, don't we? Can we give the Holy Spirit a round of applause? <laughs> and in our Bibles, Sister Maxine, we've got Esther, we've got names of books and brethren, we've got different women's names. But today we have our own gospel according to Maxine. Amen. <laughs> And the smile. I could stay here for a long time, but just to say, Maxine, on behalf of our family, we love you. And I love plants. <laughs> Indoor plants, okay? And the garment of praise, the garment of love that yourself and dear Reverend Glenn has worn, I see the garments of Glenn, of Maxine, on this congregation. Wear your garments well, Amen. out there, on the highways and byways. Yes. Maxine, your smile is a ministry. Yes. And if you came to our house, there's a neon light that says, smile. <laughs> and God's kingdom character is about when you smile at a time like this, ministry, that God's love has touched our hearts. And Maxine, may God be with you strengthen you in this time all my love and all our love thank you, thank you now i'd just like to take the next 10 minutes probably now uh, i look around i like to greet the gordon family on this side and that side, in-laws. Now, grandchildren, where are you? What's your name, sir? Uh, Romain, what's your sir? These two beautiful young men. You just walked to the chest and I saw them because you were crying, young man. You made me cry, I'm thinking, I didn't want to cry today. You're so special. And granddad would have I want you to all of them to come back and bless them. Because, you know what? This one. You've got granddad in your spirit, right? Yeah. And I want to bless you for four hands, brother. Father God. These are your son, next generation now, two generations. I confirm that they're blessed. 
teachers, teachers, you will be in your special already. And God has told you that. And I'm saying to you today, walk and remember what Grandad said. Because Grandad told you some good things to do. Don't stop doing them. And you'll be blessed over. Thank you. You know, Pastor Glenn, Glenford, Rev Glenn, you know, I've done a funeral with him before, and he's asked me to do funerals here. Now, I am the ragamuffin, really. I wrote me come from, see? Now, Pastor Glenn would never say that. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> In fact, when Pastor Glenn and I are meeting with the family, and they say, Carver, you're on the ragamuffin, you know. Pastor Glenn, he's so I said, you're saying I'm, I'm, I'm wrong, are you? <laughs> no, you know, my dear family and friends. Pastor Glenn, the night before he passed, and we all came here and we were praying. Those of you who was here, you remember? Yes. We prayed, we sang, we prayed, we sang, we spoke to the Lord. But the Lord said to Pastor Glenn, I got your ticket. <laughs> I've got your ticket. Glenn, Pastor, Daddy, Granddad, Husband, I got your ticket, friend. I got your ticket. Now I'm thinking, God, what do you mean you've given him a ticket already? Now he's my UFA mate, 66. I'm thinking, when someone dies that you love so dearly, it brings your own mortality to the forefront. And today, Pastor Glenn said, I want you to know Christ. Hallelujah. And those of you who are online, and those of you who are in the, what do you call the room next door? The overflow room. I was going to call it the breakout room then. <laughs> the overflow room. I know that Pastor Glenn, this congregation here, I couldn't find a place to park. Why? Because this man has been a light. Matthew chapter 5, he said he's been a light in the community. And we need to understand Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what I want to say today. Psalm 27 is the scripture that was read. And I want to just take a few minutes to talk about Psalm 27. His beautiful children. You're big people now, you know. <laughs> wow. And there's no word that Reverend Carver can say that will bring daddy back, or granddad back, brother back. I can't say any words today that will do that. But I can say words of comfort that will allow you to know that you can live as Pastor Glenn did. You can live in authority and integrity and honesty as Pastor Glenn did. It's good to see Pastor David, Reverend David here. And you know what, sir? You're a part of the fraternity of the Baptist Union. And you've seen this man of God who's been an example. You could say, go and follow Pastor Glenn. Because Pastor Glenn wouldn't go places. Follow me as I follow Christ. So Psalm 27. David said, The Lord is. Not maybe, not probability. Not an, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And because the Lord is all of that, I don't going to fear nobody. Pastor Glenn feared nobody. Yeah, believe me. I've seen him. When you go to places with Pastor Glenn, you need to understand that it's in order. I've been out with him. We've sat down. We've eaten. And I'm listening to him. And he's a man of wisdom and clarity. Are you that? Young people, the next generation. So we have the first and the generation and the second and the third and the fourth generation. We can learn from what Pastor Glenn, Pastor Gordon represented. 
So Pastor Gordon said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I don't fear nobody. The Lord is the strength of my life. I will never be afraid. Even when I saw Sister Maxine and Sister Maxine is there and she's, she's strong as my darling wife says. She's strong not because she's strong. Don't get this the wrong way. Don't boost her said because she's strong. She's strong because of the word of God that is in her. That's what it is. And as Pastor Glenn said, I want you and I to know Jesus Christ, Yeshua. That's the key here. I'm a social scientist. I'm an academic. I know all the hermeneutics and epistemology and all of that. But that ain't going to help if you, I don't know Jesus. Knowing Jesus is having the character of Christ. The character, Philippians 2 and verse 5. Have you got the character of Christ? And my wife knows and my daughter knows that when I'm at home, I'm the same as I am here right now. So I don't put on, Pastor Glenn didn't put on and take off. So the Lord is. Hallelujah. He said when the wicked, even my enemy, they come to cuss you down. They come to call you names. They come to say that you are this and you are that. But when Jesus Christ is in you, believe me, you're going to say, get thee behind me. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want us to understand today, my dear family and friends, near and far, online, how you doing at home? Where's the camera? I don't even know where it is. Wherever the camera is, I'm sure they're... Well, it's, it's looking in anyway. <laughs> looking in. Verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord. Hallelujah. What is your desire? To have a better house, better car? Have a better job? What's your desire? David said, don't watch those desires because they will go. Pastor Glenn had other plans. And you know what? You're going to have to fulfill some of them for him. Brother Keith and sister. You're going to have to do that for him. Sister Maxine and his darling children and his grandchildren. You're going to have to do some of that for him. Because you know what? He ain't here to do those anymore. So the time when I heard Pastor Glenn is in hospital. What do you mean he's in hospital? He just buried his brother on the 9th. And I saw him popping some moves at the grave. You got some new moves. Did you see the new moves? Why are you laughing? He had some new moves. I saw them. And I'm thinking, as I watched it online, and when I reviewed it, I'm thinking, you're going to die in a few days after that, and you don't know. That's what got to me, and I'm thinking, God, death and life is in the same space. And that's why we have to know that we have to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not apologizing for talking about Jesus. I'm not apologizing to say that we need to know Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the risen King. I'm not apologizing because that's the key. Why Pastor Glenn and we can celebrate him today. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm Pentecostal if you didn't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let me take another few minutes and then I'm kind of, I'm going to finish really. So here we are now in the phase after Pastor Glenn's death. We're in the phase of mourning. But we're in a phase of celebrating who he was. I've never been to a place where there's been so many tributes. Why? Because he was so special to us. I'm sure more people are going to come up until, my brother, you're getting stressed. 
Pastor Keith is getting stressed up here. And I'm hearing him say, the pastor have to go up and preach as well. How come are you going up? <laughs> My brother, I get it. Your mom is just chilled out up here, you know. Your mom just sitting down. And I'm there just smiling because I know how the routine is. And that's why I'm thinking. And some of you are thinking, I hope he ain't going to preach long today, you know. <laughs> Glory to God. I kind of know those, those flexes as well, really. And you know what? I want to leave three key words with you today. And we did verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Look at that. Pastor Glenn is now dwelling in the everlasting space, eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Pastor Glenn. I don't know how it works where you are now, but hear this. You have blessed us whilst you are alive, and we want to bless others whilst we are still alive. Hallelujah. Verse 5. For in the time of trouble. Big man. Talk Creole. Your daddy won't talk this for you too. But let me do it for you still. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the time of challenge and trouble. You know what? We're in a bit of a turbulent time because we haven't even buried that yet. We haven't got around the coffin yet. We haven't got the flowers yet. We haven't dressed him properly yet. So those are real things in the time of trouble and distress. It says here that the secret, you will be dwelling in the secret the shelter of his tent and he's set you on a rock. So Philippians 4 verse 13 said, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me the strength. Pastor Glenn did that and said that all the time. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. So let me just conclude by saying today, we leave from this memorial celebration service and there is pain, there's anguish, uncertainty. We're still questioning God. Why now? He was ready. He had this. He had that. I question God. I'd be, if I'm honest with you, I kind of said, God, what are you doing? What are you saying? I don't know how you talk to God, but I'm kind of real with God. Sometime the other day I came home. I'm Jamaican, by the way. I was born in Jamaica. And um, I had to speak Creole to God because I couldn't get the word. It's too nice in English. So I had to tell God in a particular way. Why are you laughing? It's true. God speaks Creole. Urdu, Punjabi, Gujarati. Come on. The God we're dealing with here. We don't limit God to some box and... Don't, don't do that. So I had to express to God some stuff. But what I'm grappling with, I'm saying to you today, be real with God about your stuff. Don't pretty it up. Don't pretty it up. Tell God how this is. He gets set. And when you bring truth to your situation and you become vulnerable, the Lord will help you. Hallelujah. I'm done. I need to stop here. Let's just... Mr. Maxine, I want to say something finally to you, woman of God. You, not just about your character, because you see all these people and people want to, how is your you are such a woman of God and God said I'm going to give you more and more grace for this season you are going to speak ah! oh! hallelujah upon you woman of God God said I'm giving you a double portion of anointing for the season and beyond 
people are going to be wondering how you do it. Oh, you need to always give the glory to God. Because, and I know you will. So I just pray that continued anointing upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of the Father, Yahweh, and the only begotten Son, Yeshua, the risen King, and of the comfort of the Holy Spirit upon you now. Amen. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. One thing I heard from this morning's message is something Pastor himself would have said. On the Sundays that he has passed, we have had an altar call and we have prayed for individuals. We prayed for healing, we prayed over his, their lives. Today, I feel the heart of Pastor and he's saying, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior and step up. Step up. He would say, knowing Jesus, there is no greater thing. You wonder why we're here today? You wonder why we're as strong as we are today? It's because we have Jesus. Please join me in the final hymn.
us with us today. Thank you for staying with us. Please join us uh, for refreshments around the back and stay as long as you like. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you.